in God's house today, and isn't it good to have everybody vaccinated? Yeah. We can take our masks down. Uh, but again, like I said last week, some people look better if they put their masks back up than they did. It might not improve their hygiene, but it improved their looks. God's good. All the time. All the time. God is good. God is good. Let's all stand. We're going back to Revelation today. So, so let's go in. We're going to talk about Revelation. Uh, the other side of the rapture. We're always talking about this side of the rapture. <coughs> Today we're going to talk about the other side of the rapture. And it's so awesome, it's going to take a couple of weeks just to get through all of it. So let's come on in, and, and we're going to have a good time in the Lord. See you guys all. Let's say this together. I'm expecting about a hundred more, so when they come in, just slide over and let them come in. Amen? All right. All right. Let's say this together. These are the two most important hours of my week. Help me to cherish them. I'm here today to worship, not to be entertained. <clears throat> I'm singing to an audience of one. Accept my worship, oh Lord. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. <laughs> and of course, when DC is not here, uh, and I'm leading, I find out it's better just to do courses. It, may, it really is. I, I mean, I've really been enjoying it. I hope y'all have too. So we're going to sing some courses. <clears throat> DC will be back next week. He's graduating from a fire class. I, don't know, I call it graduating, but he's been in the fire thing for the last four days. And so today is his last day. So we'll see him again next week. And uh, I'm glad that he's helping save lives. But at the same time, we don't get a chance to see him as much because while he's out saving lives, uh, a lot of times it's Sunday. So, so uh, he does work shifts. And so let's just uh, remember him in prayer and that he, he and all the other guys stay safe. When they're, because you know what, these guys run in when other guys are running out. Okay, and these guys do a tremendous job. I was a fireman and fire marshal with fire all kinds of stuff. I, I remember all those days, and and uh, and uh, I didn't have any fancy stuff. The guys, the guys got cool looking stuff now, but we didn't have, we didn't have the cool stuff, but we did have protective gear, which was cool. Y'all, I'm just rambling now. Y'all ready? Okay, we're going to sing I Was Born a Rambling Man. Y'all ready? Yeah. <laughs> Been God good. All the time. Let's go ahead. We're going to sing This is the Light of Mine, right? If I can turn everything back on. I turned it off because I was too noisy in the back room back right there. Ooh, there it goes. Ready? <clears throat> and I'm allergic to these uh, artificial flowers. <coughs> Ready? This is the light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine.
receive today is an offering. <clears throat> the, the brass man, this is the tax man, the brass man is back there in the back. And we're still using the brass man for right now because we're just waiting to get through all the COVID stuff. But the next week or so, we'll have regular ushers again, and that'll be okay. So if you've already put it back there, I want you to just lift your hand up. Uh, and if you haven't put it already, put it back there, lift it up. I want you to hold it up. I want you to repeat after me. Y'all ready? I lift my offering to you. Let it please you, O oh Lord. This is my seed. Oh, at least my hand it will never leave my life. You will multiply it. Accept my seed, O oh Lord. Give the Lord a hand clap. Okay, that's right. Amen, amen, amen. Let's go back over here. Y'all ready? We did it so good last week, I want to do it again. <laughs> uh, I keep falling in love with him. I spent look up the guy's name uh, from Jimmy Swagger. He used to sing this. But I used to love this song. I used to love to hear him sing it. And so uh, and now we're singing it. Amen. <laughs> but we're not doing as good as he did it, but we're still doing it good. All right? Because we're doing it for God. Ready? All right. I just, I, I keep falling in love with him.
Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. Stretch forth your hands this way. Father, I love you, Lord. I praise your name. I thank you for your grace. I thank you for your ultimate, awesome mercy. I thank you, God, that we don't have to walk this place by ourselves, that we've always got you with us, that you're always there to take care of us, Lord, that you see us, you know us, you understand us better than we understand ourselves. Lord, there's so many times where we may even feel like we're walking through the valley of the shadow of death and we're walking by ourselves, but you don't have to worry about that because you said that you would always be with us even in that valley. I ask you right now, Lord, to touch, to anoint, have your will in your way. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And church said, Amen. Amen. You can be seated. This, this, this passage of Scripture is so full of symbols that I really hated to just do it all in one Sunday because, number one, you know me, I like to get a little more details when I get going. Uh, and number two is it's just so rich. Even without details, we really need to be able to grasp and pull in all of Revelation. So we're just going to take our time. And that's all we're doing this other stuff too along the way. Like the first Sunday, back to basics. We're going to give us a chance just to take our time. But I, <clears throat> I didn't want to tell you, you know, <clears throat> not long ago I asked DC to give me the phone book. And we were sitting there talking. I said, give me the phone book. And he laughed at me and called me a dinosaur. Y'all see, we still get some phone books in the mail. Y'all still get phone books? Yeah, we still get phone books. So I said, Dizzy, can you give me the phone book? He said, he called me a dinosaur, and he lent me his iPhone. Well, so the spider was dead, and the iPhone was broken, and DC was furious. <laughs> I'll explain if I need to. <laughs> okay. I wanted a phone book to kill the spider. And he didn't give me a phone book. He gave me his iPhone, so I killed the spider with his iPhone. That's it. I got even less laughter. I'm just going to be quiet. <laughs> All right, here we go. Here we go. Johnny Carson, he was so funny because some, some of his jokes were so dry, it was just funny watching him try to recoup from it. And me, another problem is I got the dry part, but I don't have the ability he has to recoup from it. So here we go. Up to now, we've been studying Revelation. Up to now, here's all we've been seeing. Chapter 1. We saw the vision of the glorified Christ. He said, I want you to write down things that were, which, which are, and which are to, come, are to come. I want you to write those down. And so he, there's the, the, the glorified Christ. Then two and three, we saw the vision of seven churches. And, and that was a very powerful, powerful study because of seven churches, with seven actual geographic churches. Uh, it was also seven different attitudes or personalities of churches. It was seven different church ages and, and honestly seven different kinds of Christian. And I promise you that if you look at it with an open mind and let the Holy Spirit minister to you, you can find you, yourself, hopefully just a little bit, not a bunch, in every one of the churches. Okay? So now, so they just said so that way we can make ourselves, we can grow. It's all for growing. It's not for being beat down, but it's for growing. Then, chapter 4, verses 1, we talked about the rapture of the church. So, so now, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna talk about, of course, so now we're going to get our first glimpse of heaven from the other side of the rapture. You hear it, and, and, and don't even hear it preached much anymore. At least I don't. I'm not saying it's not being preached. You have to be careful. Be careful when you say nobody's talking about it anymore or everybody's talking about it. Because a lot of times somebody says, well, everybody's talking about it. And you find out one person talked to them. Everybody's talking about this, Pastor, and you find out one person. Or, or somebody, nobody's preaching this, and you find it being preached everywhere. So, so just be careful. And remember this, too. In this day where there's so many mixed opinions <clears throat> you have to to listen to understand not listen to respond okay there's too many people out there just listening to respond they want you to give them five seconds so they cannot just tell you their opinion they want to school you and that's not what this is about I don't need you to school me let me listen with them. let me understand why you feel the way you feel and then together we may together 
both listen and understand, we may come together with a better understanding of the whole thing. So if you catch me, and I give you permission, if you catch me listening to respond, stop me. You will not make me mad. You will actually make me glad because I'll go, what's I doing that? I'm so sorry. Yeah, I, I do it my wife. My wife gets talking and sometimes I get, I get abrupt and she goes, I'm not about to talk. I go, I'm sorry. Because I'm trying not to do that. I'm trying to wait and listen. Sometimes people just wait for you to take a breath and before you can even take the breath, they're listen, try to listen and understand, especially with all this crazy mess going on. Okay? That'll make things a whole lot better. So here we go. Now we're talking about the other side of the rapture. I'm, so I'm going I'm to go back uh, uh, to Revelation. We just read, but I'm only going to read four verses. Just four. Just four. And next week we'll finish up. Hopefully we'll finish up on others. There's seven things that are very powerful in the fourth chapter. Okay? Uh, and so, so we're, we're going to talk about some of them today. So here it is. After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven. And the first voice which I heard, as it were, a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. The rapture. Taking him up. And immediately I was in the spirit. Our bodies are not going to be able to get to heaven like this. Our bodies have to be transformed. And so this word spirit here means literally spiritized. Okay? So it means that it's not his whole body was just spiritized. He was taken, spiritized, and brought to heaven. All right? And behold, a throne was set in heaven, and would sit on the throne. And he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone, that there was a rainbow round about the throne, in sight like unto an emerald. And round about the throne were four and twenty elders, and upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting, clothed in white raiment, and they had on their heads crowns of gold. Now you got to understand something. In this time, well, after the rapture, after the rapture, that's when during, when you when you get into heaven, that's when literally that's when the judgment seat of Christ, the bema judgment, is going to take place. Not the white throne of judgment. You hear me say it all the time. The white throne of judgment are for sinners. The bema judgment is where you decide who come in first, who come in second, who come in third. You get your rewards. And so the thrones you get there are going to be, I mean, not thrones, but the, 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 the crowns are going to be a little bit different. It's not going to be these crowns that look like something that a king will wear this way, but it's going to be the wreath that goes around your head. And that's what they played for in the Olympic Games. But in the Olympic Games back then, they would, they would fade away, but the ones we're going to get in heaven will never fade away. So, so here we go. So now we're going to talk. Again, we're, we're going to talk about the whole the throne. That is, is very powerful what I'm getting ready to tell you. So I want you to, if you're taking notes, please take notes. And again, if, if, uh, if you want outlines of anything, please let me know. I'll get you outlines. Uh, this, it, it, God wants us to know what we're talking about. At least have some idea what we're talking about, okay? So it's very important, especially right now. People are always asking about Revelation now. People ask me all the time about Revelation. People I don't even know. Uh, uh, I've even had people come to me who didn't even know I was a pastor and, and start talking about Revelation. And then the final pastor goes, oh, the, how about you tell me then? Okay, so, so I'm telling you, people are very interested now. Even the unbelievers are starting to believe. So, so let's go ahead and go. I'm going to take my time. The central object of heaven. I didn't say the central person of heaven. Who's the central person of heaven? God. Oh, yeah, Jesus. He's the central person. But what's the central object in heaven? The central object in heaven is the throne of God. And I'm going to explain that. Do you know that in just these first six verses of chapter 4, the throne is mentioned eight times. In the entire chapter, the throne is mentioned 12 times. Chapter 4, the throne is mentioned. If you go to chapter 5 and add it 6, in just the first, the first glimpse of heaven, the throne is mentioned 18 times. Wow. That is the central object of heaven. Matter of fact, the throne actually is a fixed point. You know what a fixed point is? A fixed point is something that does not change. It's like the North Star. It does not change. The throne of God does not change. It will never change because God is in control, will always be in control, always have and always will be in control 
the throne room is the most powerful place in the universe. Okay? So, so it's an immovable point of reference. Everything else in heaven is located in relationship to the throne. Wow. So now, so now he goes on. Let's go a little bit further here. Let's, let's read this. Let me get over here where I can see it. Praise God. It says, And immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, set, not S-I-T, S-E-T, set in heaven, and one sat on the throne, and he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone, and there was a rainbow round about the throne, in sight like unto an emerald, Revelation 4, 2 and 3. So now, now let's go ahead and let's go ahead and dig in a little bit to this one now. Look, seated upon the throne was the triune God. Very powerful, powerful scene. He just saw the seven churches. He saw the destruction of what was going on with the seven churches. And, and he hadn't even began to see what's going to happen when the seals begin to get open. But he's in heaven. And before he sees that destruction, the very first thing he sees is the glory of God. I've seen some very glorious things in my life. I've seen some times where I just felt the presence of God so strong, I just wanted to bask in His presence, didn't want to leave. But can you imagine seeing God on His throne? Wow. So, so one way, now remember, these guys, these guys didn't have, uh, uh, like we've got television, and we've got comic books, and we've got uh, computer uh, graphics. They didn't have all that. So he had to describe things in what was common to him. Remember when the prophet starts talking about scorpions? When the last day scorpion was stingers in their tails talking about helicopters and talking about uh, chariots jumping from mountaintop to mountaintops, talking about jets, so and talking about uh, the sky rolling like a scroll, a nuclear explosion, all this stuff going on. Because they did not know this stuff. They had never seen it. We have. So, so one way to describe the beauty of what he saw was is he thought about precious stones. And it was jasper and sardis. I had one kid one time say sardines. I said, no, not sardines. He said, it was really stinking heaven. I said, no, it don't. it's not sardines. It's sardis. Okay? So now, so now, watch this now. There's a special reason why he saw jasper and sardis. If you look at the great high priest, the high priest wore a breastplate. And on that breastplate, it had these precious stones. And on these precious stones, Sardis and Jasper were there. They were the first and the last stones on the high priest's breastplate. Listen, listen again. They were the first and the last stones on the high priest's breastplate. Anybody see where I'm going? You see, it's a picture of the one, the great high priest, who says, I am the first and the last. Wow, that's powerful. And so, so here he is, he's watching this, and as he's seeing this, he's just amazed because now he's watching, he's seeing Alpha and Omega in a whole different way that he'd never seen him before. So, so now watch this, let's go a little bit further. Talking about the throne. And the throne, a throne itself actually uh, uh, speaks of sovereignty. And it speaks of authority. But a throne set. Remember I didn't say S-I-T. S-E-T. A throne set means stability, firmness, and durability. Right now in all this crazy mess we got going on with the, with the gas. And oh man, and there's people fighting at the gas stations trying to get gas. And other people driving up with trucks and trying to fill up all these jugs. You know, and I think I might have told y'all, I pulled beside one woman and she had all these jugs. And she was filling up the jugs and it was very limited gas supply. But the gas pumps even started getting very, very slow because it was getting so low. She was just filling up everything. And, and I had to sit on my lips. I walked over, and right time I heard to say it, common sense kicked in, and I shut up. I started to ask her, I bet you know where all the toilet paper went, don't you? <laughs> St stability, firmness, durability. We know that no matter how crazy this world gets, 
God's throne is not being budged. This had not budged this throne. Do you think God's up in heaven saying, Get us some gas for the chariots of fire? You think God's in heaven, honey? Find us some toilet paper. <laughs>
Because of stuff like this, all the time, she's ministering to people. But in heaven, she's not an angel. In heaven, she is an individual, redeemed, and God has his angels ministering to her. All of our loved ones that's gone on before us, they're redeemed. The angels are ministering to them. Don't let anybody tell you they're angels. They're not angels, not on a cloud, plucking a heart. They're the redeemed of God. And they're really, really know what it's like to see the stuff we're talking about right now. So watch. <clears throat> Get ready. Crazy. It says 24. 4 and 20, 24. Why, why 24? <clears throat> well, 24 is the number of completion. And it's simple. I, I read behind a lot of theologians on this scripture. Some theologians say there's the 12, 12 different patriarchs in the Old Testament and 12 apostles in the New Testament. The Bible did say that the foundations were going to be the names of the apostles. So I do know that it's possible there's the 12 apostles. But then there's the 12 tribes uh, of Israel. So there's so much stuff going on. So the Bible's not clear on what these 24 are. But I do believe with all my heart it would be safe to say that whatever it is, because God's number is 12 with this, that there's 12 from the Old Testament, 12 from the New Testament, gives us 24, and it's a completion. Now watch this. Get ready. It said seats for thrones. That word seat, there's for thrones. That word seats, sitting around them, they were on thrones. We're going to reign with him. You know, the Bible says if you suffer with him, you're going to reign with him. Amen? If we suffer with him, we will reign with him. You may be going through something down here now, but eventually you're going to reign with Jesus Christ. So, so to cease. And then, I love this, they were setting. Setting signifies rest. Do you know uh, <clears throat> in the temple, look at, all, look at all of the furniture in the Old Testament temple, temple and tabernacle. When you see all the things that are there, you never see chairs. Ever do you see chairs in the temple. Why? Because the priest, once they went into minister, could never sit down. They were always so busy doing what they did. They never, they were busy offering sacrifices. They could never sit down. And because they could never sit down, the Bible says once Jesus went up into heaven, the first thing it said he did was he sat down. Amen? He sat down. So now, when we get to heaven, you might not have to sit down now, but days coming when our labors are going to be over and we're going to be sitting. Now, let's go a little bit further. Isn't this good stuff? All right, ready? Sitting around the throne again, we're talking about four and twenty elders. They're clothed in white raiment. Why are they clothed in white raiment? Because they're forgiven. Sin can no longer stain them. You know, wouldn't it be nice? Really, can you imagine a day? One day. Just one day. Matter of fact, has anybody had one day in the last week that you had absolutely no problem? No takers? All right, anybody had it in the last month had one day you had no problems? Okay, the last year. No takers? The last 10 years. Okay, uh, last couple of hours. <laughs> Nobody's raising their hands. Why? Because the pressure of this world is on us. And we constantly feel the pressure on us. But can you imagine a day when we don't feel that pressure anymore? Can you imagine a day when you're not feeling those problems anymore? Can you imagine a day when you don't have to worry about uh, uh, if you're going to make enough money or if you're going to be able to be good enough for something or whatever it is? Can you imagine a day when none of that's even going to bother you anymore because you're going to have a glorified body and whatever you need is going to be taken care of? Wow. <clears throat> so, so here they are, clothed in white raiment. They're forgiven, and they have crowns of gold. Now, let me, let me talk about these crowns of gold. <clears throat> these crowns of gold are called Stephanus. Stephanus. Or Stephanuses. Okay? What a Stephanus was, was that, that oak clover. Man, the oak, it's not oak clover, but the oak uh, wreath that went around their head. And that oak wreath... Honestly, you would win that. You would work yourself to death. You would train for months. You would go to the Olympics. You would win whatever it was, gold, uh, gold, silver, or bronze. 
and you would get that stuff on us, and they would put it on you, and on the way out of the Colosseum, leaves would start falling off of it. Why? But here, the gold, the victor's crown. So because of the Stephanus is given because you have run the race or when you have competed in a way that you, you, you made it and you completed the race and you, and you, you, you scored in this thing, you, you placed in this race, then the Stephanus, obviously, they've already been to the judgment seat of Christ. And so they got the Stephanus. So, 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 so here's the crowns of gold, the victor's crown. And once they get the victor's crown, <clears throat> I'm going to just jump ahead to verse 10. After they win the victor's crown, they don't take it and start highlighting it and say, my crown is better than your, 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 your crown, or I got more leaves than you got, and blah, 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 blah. It says they throw them at his feet. Wow. Cast. Cast is a strong word. It didn't say they laid them. That's where casting crowns got their name from right here. They cast down that crown. Meaning that, look, that lets you know that that crown didn't mean as much to them as being in heaven did. And that crown didn't mean as much to them as just being in the presence of Almighty God. But none of that, but when they threw it at his feet, meant that they thanked God for giving them the victory. 1 Corinthians 15. Y'all turn with me. 1 Corinthians 15. First Corinthians 15. I'm going to read right much of this because the more I look at it, the more I keep backing up. Let's start with verse uh, 50. The Bible says, Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit in corruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. This is talking about the rapture. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For it's incorruptible must put on incorruption. And this mortal put on immortality. So when the corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord, Jesus Christ. Therefore, my brother, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. It says he gives us the victory. That word give means literally take something that belongs to the giver of much value. And he lays it in the hand of somebody, this great gift of value, he lays it in their hand as a gift. Wow. He gives us the victory. That word victory is where we get, is, is vicos, is where we get the word, uh, uh, also nikos, which is where we get the word nike, which means an overwhelming, overwhelming Utterly anguishing victory over the enemy. We don't do this because of who we are. We do this because of who he is. Powerful. Powerful, powerful. You were getting ready to close. Uh, Brandon, can you come here and get ready to strum with something, bro? Here's my question. We're going to finish this up next week, this chapter. This is some awesome, awesome stuff. Can you imagine what John's seeing right now? I mean, we've seen so much stuff. You know, uh, we got all these movies out now with all this 
you know, Superman, and we got the Avengers, and we got all this stuff, and he's all this fancy stuff, and, and, and we see all this amazing stuff because of computer-generated graphics and because of other stuff. So John had not seen anything like this. And John's standing in the presence of Almighty God with this throne and the four and twenty elders around it with gold crowns. And he sees them cast them at his feet. Wow. Mm -hmm. Makes what you're going through worth it, don't it? Makes all the problems that you may be having now, gives you a whole different perspective on it. When you think about it, when you think about what we're getting ready to see, this, look, watch this. What a sight to behold. And it's going to be soon. Sooner than you ever could imagine, it's going to happen. And if you want to be a part of it, you've got to be surrendered. I'm going to give you a little secret that would help a lot of people handle their problems. Ready? Learn to give up control. The more control a person wants to grasp, the more miserable their life is. Control is an illusion. Mario Andretti says, if you've got everything under control, you're going too slow. Control, an illusion. When I do counseling, a lot of times, I talk to people and say, look, can you, can you just give up a little control? Let God handle it. If you can give up some control and let God handle it, you'd be in a whole lot better position than you are now because you don't have all the answers. You don't have all the power. He has the answers and he has the power. He knows what needs to be done. You don't. So if you're not surrendering, your life is miserable. Blows your life miserable because you don't surrender down here. When that rapture trumpet sounds, there's a good possibility that you're going to be part of that layout of seeing crowd. So, it's going to happen soon, but you've got to be surrendered. And if you're not surrendered, you're going to be sorry. Everybody stay. Every head bowed, every eye closed. So John sees the rainbow in the battle's over, the victory's won, the, the storm's gone. So if he sees that in heaven, that means that we still have him down here. He sees the crowns not down here, but he sees them up there, meaning that we still got things we got to do, we still got races we got to run. And again, if we can learn to give up that illusion of control, life will be so much simpler, so much easier. That doesn't mean you don't care, doesn't mean you're not concerned. It just means you give the control to God. Surrender. 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 Every head bowed, every eye closed, nobody looking around. I'm just going to ask a few questions. Number one Is everything okay between you and God? Are you living. A life knowing that if that rapture trumpet sounds or something should happen, you're taken out of here. That you're ready to meet him. If you're not, you're not sure, nobody looking around, every eye closed, which just put their hands and pass the prayer for me because I'm not sure. Secondly, 
somebody here be bold and say, I do have a problem surrendering. And I do have a problem because I like to be in control. And I know that makes me miserable. And I need to give that to God. But nobody's looking around, every eye closed, and put their hand up and say, that's me. That's me. Maybe right now, You would just say, you know what? <clears throat> That's such a beauty to behold what's coming. And I just want to make sure. Me and God want to make sure. Because I don't want to mess out with such a sight. And I just want to love Him more than I've ever loved Him. And I just want to be ready more than I've ever been ready. And I want to live with that expectation. Nobody's looking around. Would you just put a hand up? That's me. I want to live with expecting. 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 <laughs> Hands went up all over the place. Here's what we're going to do. We're all going to pray together. Ready? Let's pray together. Father, Father I, need you I need you to help me, to help me. give up give my, illusion my illusion of control. control. Help me, help me. To, surrender to surrender myself, myself. completely. completely. To you. to you. Help me, Help me. To, keep the switch to keep the switch in your hands, Lord. not mine. Okay. And I thank you for it. Yeah, you for it. Help, me Help me to be all I can be, be for be. you in this last few days that we have. Days in the name of Jesus, yeah. we thank you for it all. And the church said, yeah. amen, amen, amen. amen. Okay, coming up Sunday or Tuesday night, we're gonna, I think I'm going to just do one more thing about the Bible. I never really <laughs> think. I'm not 100 sure, but I think uh, because we ask. I mean, I'm asking. This is just what I'm asking, and people are telling me what they want to hear or what, what they want to hear, and tell me what they would like to, the subjects. And I think the next subject will be triggers, not the horse trigger. <laughs> 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 Roy Rogers and Trigger. <laughs> no, we're talking about triggers. Things that that can make you flip out or things that can make you make you have a bad day. Things that actually can can make you uh, uh, whatever. You'll find out when we're talking about triggers. So 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 triggers is a good thing. Uh, it actually uh, Everybody I've ever talked to about triggers always said, you know what? I'm glad that we talked about triggers because it really helps. It really, really helps. And so, uh, uh, hey, God's got this. Amen? So now, uh, uh, brother, brother Wayne, it's so good to have you back, brother. You are the man. He's had that battle with those highs. I'm going to tell you what. Uh, only the grace of God. That's grace. That's grace standing right there. There's grace in a human suit, right? <laughs> but but he's here. I want you to I want you to say the Lord. I'm saying blessing over us for really. Let us pray. Our God in heaven is truly a blessing of me in our house. Thank you for your grace and mercy for what I promise. Thank you for the message we have brought into our hearts today, Lord. Let us find this house and all the world.